A district attorney blown up in his own front yard, a statewide manhunt for the killers. The year 1967 and the chase was on. Zach Merchant has the story in tonight's edition of Central Georgia's Criminal History. The assassination happened in Jackson County, but it was small town deputies right here in Central Georgia who played a pivotal role in the case. We couldn't, you couldn't believe it. It was such a shock. They were willing to kill whoever got into that galaxy. Floyd Horde was a hard charging district attorney. He's reigning it in an organized group. August 7th, 1967 was his last day on earth. That the uh, DA would be assassinated for, for doing his job. Horde went after organized crime in Jackson County, taking on the so-called Dixie Mafia. Copies of the Macon Telegraph from the Times say he filed so many indictments, the circuit needed to hire a second judge. Bootleggers and bandits, Mercer history professor Doug Thompson says the Dixie Mafia was not to be taken lightly. They were making money off of it, and so anything that was going to take away their money revenue or their revenue streams were th real threats to these people. Newspapers from the time tell the story of what happened next. Horde walked out his front door on the way to court. He turned the ignition in his car. Close to a dozen sticks of dynamite exploded. The district attorney was dead, and the manhunt was on. More than 100 miles away, a familiar face in Johnson County got to work. These guys were the state of Georgia, Jackson County, Johnson County, criminals compared to Al Capone. Before he became Wrightsville's longtime mayor, Willis Wombles was a 26-year-old volunteer deputy in the Johnson County Sheriff's Office. Weeks after Horde was killed, a house exploded in Wombles' jurisdiction, revealing an illegal whiskey still in the basement. When Johnson County Sheriff Roland Attaway connected its owners to the Horde murder case, the small town deputies found themselves in the middle of the hottest case in the state. Because it was very tense. It was very tense around here. Lloyd C. and John Blackwell were indicted and placed in separate Wrightsville jails, one by the courthouse. This was where the old jail was. The other across the street. This was the jail. This was the back door to the jail. Then Governor Lester Maddox wanted the state to take over the case. Johnson County Sheriff Roland Attaway had other ideas. And he told the governor, no governor, this is our case in Johnson County. We can handle it and we're going to keep the prisoners. C. and Blackwell, along with three others, were ultimately tried and convicted of Horde's murder. Old newspapers report a 76-year-old bootlegger named Cliff Park paid $5,000 for the hit. C. Blackwell and two others helped carry it out. With their convictions, the drama, at least in Wrightsville, was over. But 52 years later, Wobble says it's still just as important to remember. Horde's sacrifice, Attaway's perseverance, and a quick response to the unimaginable. You don't, you don't ever think about that. You never, you just don't, you don't even dream these things. You don't even suspect these things until they happen. Wombles later went on to serve as Wrightsville's mayor for more than 25 years. Chief Deputy Tanner, who was Sheriff Attaway's second in command, was later elected sheriff after Attaway stepped down. All right, Zach, thank you. According to Willis Wombles, all five of the men ultimately convicted of Horde's murder were given life sentences. However, several of those sentences were later commuted.